Hey, everybody. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Brad Kane. I'm Director of B2B Marketing here at Keeper Security. Um, lucky to have Travis Griffith with us, one of our great solutions engineers. Travis, you're based out of Texas, right? Is it Dallas or? Uh, just north of Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, Utah. Sorry about yeah. that. Travis was just telling me it is a uh, sweltering 106 degrees where he's at today. So yeah. trying to stay cool. Um, I'm coming to you from Chicago, which is Keepers Global Headquarters. Uh, we do have staff and offices globally, though. We have an office in Cork, Ireland, which houses our European team, as well as a new office in Tokyo, Japan, which houses our Japanese team. Um, on top of that, we do have support from the Philippines, 24-7 customer support, and our engineering team is based out of Sacramento in the United States. So. We have about two minutes until the webinar starts. Uh, we're probably just going to sit quietly, <laughs> try not to bore you to death, and let more people join before we actually start the presentation. Um, quick housekeeping, there is a chat and Q&A available for uh, both speakers as well as the guests. So if you have questions, feel free to pop them into the, the chat or the questions box. We're going to be answering those live, and we're also going to be interrupting Travis as we get good ones. Because honestly, an interactive presentation is a lot more entertaining than just watching somebody talk about slides. So um, ask away. And actually, if anybody has questions now, I guess we could start early answering questions. All right, we'll wait. Um, so Travis, why don't we give it about one more minute and then we can kick off. I'm good. Perfect. That'd be great. Cool. Oh, one more piece of housekeeping. We are going to be giving away a free Yeti um, cooler, and we're just going to add the, the names, the attendees to a random name picker, and one lucky person is going to get the free Yeti cooler. So if you stick around to the end, we're going to draw the name, and we'll let you know. We're just going to buy this on Amazon and send it directly to you. So we'll reach out privately for your shipping address, send you the Amazon package, and get you your Yeti cooler. should be awesome. All right, Travis, you want to get us kicked off? Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to this uh, presentation of the Keeper Cybersecurity uh, Platform. We really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, so our presentation is, is going to be on uh, ransomware attacks and, and specifically protecting small businesses from ransomware attacks. So essentially, the, it begs the question, what what is ransomware? You know, ransomware is really, it's a game, right? It's a game that that you didn't sign up for. It's a game that you didn't agree to play. And um, and and we don't want to do any fear mongering. You know, that's that's not the point of the session today. Um, but we do want to tell you, you know, what measures you have available at your disposal to to fight back against these things. And that's really a lot of what Keeper does here. But um, you know, as we talk about the systems of control that that run your business um, to to help you you know, mitigate uh, that the risk of, of that lost control uh, and the consequences that follow. So uh, essentially just rolling through. And again, you know, we welcome your questions. We'd love uh, love to answer things live here for you. And again, of course, we do have the, the, the raffle prize uh, as was mentioned earlier. And, you know, some of the features of that is uh, it's, it's got a hefty hauler handle. Uh, it's got a uh, roto molded uh, construction. Uh, it holds, you know, roughly 18 cans, uh, so it's got good capacity. Um, you know, just just a tough uh, uh, unit for your travels. So, hopefully, this will help you to to have some fun uh, summer adventures this year. Uh, anyways, all right. So, getting into it a little bit deeper, Internet of Things devices and the the proliferation of of enterprise cloud. So. Um, what are Internet of Things devices? Uh, essentially, those are those are going to be your your smart refrigerators, your smart TVs, uh, you know, smart watches. The, these devices are everywhere, and and they're popping up more and more. But the the issue is that they are the world's greatest cybersecurity risk. There's not a lot of um, you know a, a lot of thought put into the the security, oftentimes, and and 
so these are out on your, you know, maybe your home office network or even perhaps your office network. Uh, and and perhaps an easy way for an attacker to get in and, and start executing something to start a, uh, a ransomware attack. So it, it's always the little things that those areas that we don't really think about where um, where these cyber criminals um, start to, to edge their way into our systems. So 81% of breaches are due to weaker stolen passwords. Um, so what threats are out there to, to steal your passwords? Hacking has become a multi-billion dollar industry. I'm, I'm sure that's not news to anyone at this point. Um, there's a lot of threats out there, hacking groups, foreign governments. Uh, there's call centers filled with people executing campaigns that, that want to take control from honest businesses. Um, so when it comes to ransomware, obviously, you know, leverage is always the goal. And, and again, we're not here to, to fear monger. This, this is going to be about, you know, hope and, and, you know, strength, things that you can do to uh, to take advantage of of security expertise and and to to swing the balance uh, always back into your favor. So, all right, getting a little bit deeper into this, you know, the the threats that are out there. Small businesses are the primary target for cyber criminals, uh, and then why is that, right? And and so, forty six percent of breaches involve small to medium sized businesses. 75% of small businesses say they don't have the staff or IT security issues. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive on that, right? They're trying to leverage, obviously, your vulnerability. You're saying, hey, here's all these threats out there. They have full time, you know, eight, 10 hours a day. All they think about is how to how to break in, steal my passwords, how to how to leverage my systems, uh, how to social engineer against me. Um, and then the the end result of that is potentially 60% of small businesses could go out of business within six months of a data breach. So, and the question is, well, how, how do I respond to a threat like that? A threat of, of these people that are constantly working nonstop uh, against me. So, so how does Keeper play into this role, right? In, into helping your business. Um, I mean, if you don't have a budget to hire an army of, of security experts and engineers, um, Keeper does employ an army of, of security experts and professionals to help you out. So, and then you say, well, maybe I have a, uh, only a conservative budget to address this issue, which is common. You know, I have limited resources. I have a conservative budget. That's also fine because we're helping out a large volume of folks so we can afford to have an army of security experts working 10 to 15 hours a day and, and always ensuring that that we can mitigate these risks and and help to uh, to fight these uh, these threats, uh, reduce your attack surfaces and and so on. So, um, so yeah, you don't have to go without help. And even if you have a conservative budget, you can have the best help uh, available and, and the best security experts available and access to be advised by the best security experts available. So let's talk about some of the data breaches that, that have happened uh, recently. So the, the Atlassian data breach, uh, essentially the uh, employee credentials were stolen and they gained access to uh, vendor data, uh, employee records. And, and you can start to see you know, how this, this picture is developing in terms of leverage. Um, looking at the data that was stolen here, so employee records are stolen, office and uh, office building floor plans, so some of the threats, what, what does that entail? Some of the threats that could come about? Well, with employee records, you have potentially um, perhaps medical information, private health information, um, uh, or things from uh, criminal background checks that were done, You know, certainly anything of that nature. So, or employee records that might contain social security numbers, as we all well know, would be a scary thing. So. With these bad actors and and obviously these people have a lot of these dark triad characteristics that's why they want something for nothing that's why they they want to try to leverage you to to try to steal what you've earned honestly what you fought for honestly they don't care about your employees or the consequences they're in and uh so they'll come in and say hey we'll uh we'll steal your um employees identities with their social security numbers maybe that's part of the um, the consequences here of this data breach, or, um, you know, we're going to put your, your office building floor plans out on the internet. Um, 
and, and just basically put your security at risk, put your physical security at risk. So again, it, it's really anything, unfortunately, anything that they can think of to uh, to go against you and, and to try to, to give you that emotional response. Um, well, it's, it's sometimes, unfortunately, it's not even an emotional response. It could be a practical response of trying to pay the ransomware, which we never want to be in that position, right? So, so that's, yeah, that's the risk of, of um, the data breach. And, and obviously, again, it goes back to the passwords, the passwords. A lot of people think of a password as just a string of text. And, and what a password literally is, it's control over your business. Um, so keeping that in mind, this kind of a data breach, you might look at something like uh, Keeper Secrets Manager, um, which uh, which can you know tokenize things, and we can get into these uh, in a little bit more detail. But just know that that Keeper is is always developing solutions to to mitigate these risks before they even happen. So the next data breach that we have is uh, the Move It data breach, and so the the hackers served a, a zero day vulnerability. They they basically jumped in, and so a zero day vulnerability is an undiscovered flaw in an application or operating system. Um, and, and those are extremely hard to, to detect, especially when you're, you know, uh, when you're going through and, and decoding, debugging software and you have all these software deadlines. And of course, you know, in a commercial environment, there's pressure to perform, you know, as, as you would expect. Um, and then they did a, an SQL injection to steal data uh, from the organization. So, this this is a really you know tragic type of breach and, and again we have ways to mitigate against these things um you know speaking to it at at a high level uh on the sql side again this would be something that, that we look at with uh protecting uh tokenizing credentials rotating credentials on a regular basis so that in this uh incident you know perhaps when the hacker had gotten in if they they got into the source code using you know the keeper solution perhaps there would have been a token instead of an actual sql password or um you know or the the password would have rotated automatically before anything could really happen with it um so yeah they they also moved the application endpoint uh the api endpoint to steal database content um so so transferring uh, an application endpoint would be uh, an example of saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to reroute the address. I have this, this data pipe of information and I'm going to reroute where this data is going, um, which is obviously a scary premise because that data pipe is essentially a fire hose of, of data, you know, that's going, going out. And, and as you have to provide data services to uh, often to your customers, that that's a huge, you know, vulnerability uh, risk. So, and it affected hundreds of companies. And this, again, this goes back to the leverage and control um, that, that they're trying to seize. And, you know, as you watch these types of breaches happen, I, and we do have the next example is, is a breach that happens. And there's a video uh, with it that you can actually see in real time how people are reacting to this. But again, how would they leverage those relationships um, with those hundreds of companies uh, or make threats with the information that they stole. And so, you know, clearly it hurts your reputation. The goal is to hurt your bottom line for them to benefit and profit. And, and they have absolutely no conscience about what they're doing, which is which is a serious issue. Um, so then we have the corridor crew data breach, which I was I was leading into. And the corridor crew data breach, this one uh, is kind of close to my heart because I, I do like this YouTube channel, Corridor Crew YouTube channel. They, you may have seen their their uh, Boston Dynamics. They made a, kind of a, a mockery of the Boston Dynamics robots, and they they made a funny video with with that. But these folks came in. They were they were going to start their business. They were going to film a show for the day, and um, right as they were getting ready to film, they realized that they were hacked. So there's actually a YouTube video, uh, and and you can actually go out and search YouTube for uh, corridor crew hacked and and watch this hack take place in real time, and you can see their emotional reactions. But even in this slide, you can see that 
you know, essentially they've, they've got their hands on their heads. And there was a lot of that people really putting their hands on their heads and because they didn't know if they were going to be in business, you know, the, the next day with this data breach. So they stole employee credentials. They, they basically um, got a backdoor, you know, into a device through, um, through a Google account and they took over the, um, the YouTube channel from the Google account. And again, it goes back to password security. Um, so in this situation, these folks were able to fortunately uh, regain control, but their, their channel was down. They lost a, a ton of revenue as a result. And it, and it was a, a metric ton of stress on all the employees and certainly management because things were in doubt for so long. I mean, essentially when the breach first happened, they, they have produced, you know, thousands of videos and their videos were wiped out. So you can imagine all, all of your work just going away um, in an instant, you know, as fast as you can snap your fingers. So again, these, these are the types of things that, that we want to avoid. And it doesn't take a lot uh, of effort to stay out of this position, to stay out of this pocket where someone can put you in the corner and and start trying to leverage you or, or abuse you and, and uh, abuse your good nature. Hey, Travis, uh, we got our first question and it's a really good okay. question. I think it's uh, worth interjecting for. So a lot of these okay. breaches and examples are relatively large companies or at least organizations with a target on the back, like a YouTube channel that's may not be huge, but they're public facing. A lot of people know about them. You know, are cyber criminals really going after your 10, 15, 20 person organization that I hate to say it is is less well known. Um, are they actually being targeted? That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I that is a, a tremendous question. So I, I I've been working in security for for quite some time, and and if you watch a firewall on on any given network, on any device, so uh, even your home network, whether whether it's your office network or your home office network, as you watch the firewall, you're going to see that that someone is always trying to break in and and i actually had um i was working for a ceo a couple of jobs back and i was the chief information officer and he said um tell me when someone's trying to break into our network and i we were sitting at lunch together and i sat there and i said has it been five seconds and he said yeah and i said okay someone's trying to break into our network and i said it's been five seconds again okay someone's trying to break into our network that's literally how many threats are out there. So if you are connected to the internet, if you have a device uh, out there, these folks are, uh, there's, there's millions of them. And, um, and they, they spend all day, every day, trying to cheat their way into some money that they don't deserve. So, um, so yeah, it, it could be targeted. Like you said, it's, oh, you know, I, I see this big business. Um, because of my pride, I, I want to, to hack this big business for, for my reputation or for the money that I can gain or for the data that I can steal, et cetera. Um, but yeah, with, with small businesses, it's just, uh, hey, I'm doing a port scan here on this connection. I found an open port. I found a vulnerability. I'm in. And, uh, and as fast as you can snap your fingers, you're suddenly involved in a, in a ransomware attack if, if you don't have the proper measures in place. So great question. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for answering that. Mm -hmm. All right. So password security changes for, uh, for organizations, uh, lack of awareness, uh, employees resistance to change, poor password hygiene practices. Now I I've encountered all of these certainly, uh, face to face with businesses. And that's why I wanted to bring up the, the corridor crew breach and the fact that they filmed it live. I, I never had a breach when I was a chief information officer. Uh, so I've never seen a breach happen. And watching it in real time, it's it's a very stomach uh, nauseating experience. It's a stomach churning experience to see that happen, to see these people worried about their their livelihoods being lost. Worried, you know, employees worried that they're going to come in the next day and, and potentially not have a job, or or their systems will be shut down and leveraged. And um, so that you know, knowing the consequences ahead of time. And, and it's almost like if, if you said, hey, I, I'm going to write a letter to myself six months from now, and I'm going to say six months from now, if I had a data breach, what, what would I write a letter to myself saying that I wanted myself to do? And I'd probably say, 
let's protect our passwords because with our passwords, people can take control of our company. They can leverage us and, um, and demand things that never in a million years we would want to give them. Um, but unfortunately, because of, of the leverage that they've gained, I mean, you think of, I think one of the, one of the bigger things that you want to, to apply in your organization is an understanding of how much damage can be done just by a single password being compromised, right? It's people will say, well, our website password, that's not that big of a deal. But then you, you think about it because you're a good person you don't think about what you could do to someone's website if you had control of it. And if you're a terrible person, you know, what would you upload to that website? What could you possibly, you know, there's, there's a hundred things that they could do just with that one credential of, of taking over your website or, you know, stealing your, your uh, customer data, especially, you know, it's one of their favorites. Um, you know, so the employee resistance to change, uh, is is something you know that we've talked through, and and one of the ways that we really address that is coming from a place of empathy. You really don't want to address your employees, and and I know this is this isn't new to you, right? I mean, you, you want to talk to people, obviously, like a leader, and 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 be inspirational. So saying, you know what, here, guys, we have this password manager from Keeper, and it's very easy to use. It's easier to use than a spreadsheet. It's easier to use than Post-it notes. And we got this for you so that, you know, we, we want to make your job easier. We want to make you more productive, but also you can help us to do your part in protecting the company. So this is you doing your little part, protecting the company. There's new threats that are out there thanks to cryptocurrency and ransomware. And we just need you to do your little part. It can't just be IT protecting the company. It has to be all of us, but this is going to make your job easier. So please do it. And then poor password hygiene practices. Keeper has a great way to monitor that, to give you visibility on that. And it's just a communication model. Hey, we're all adults here. I see you've got some weak passwords in your vault as the admin. Please take care of those. You know, and and it's very easy for you to get reports to show who has weak passwords, who has reused passwords within Keeper. Uh, it's a powerful engine on that front. Hey, Travis, we got one more good yeah. one that I think is relevant here, and it's about MFA or 2FA. Um, okay, great. And, you know, the question was, in general, is that enough to prevent breaches? And I think there is there's a Microsoft stat that 99.9% .9 of the breached Microsoft accounts did not have MFA enabled. But I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about MFA in terms of how secure it is, but also the, the kind of security adoption paradox that we run into with MFA. Uh, with our end users yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another fantastic question. Absolutely. So, uh, so again, going back to that that paradox that, that you were talking about, the anything that that is difficult, you know, is going to build resistance among employees, or or if people perceive it to be difficult, right? Um, so, with with multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, you have these these uh, TOTP codes, and and basically it's a code that changes every 30 seconds. So you have to set it up on a device typically uh, with an application. And if you're not used to it, if, if it looks very high tech and it looks um, complex, complicated, then a lot of people will, you know, will shy away from it, right? And the, the great thing about Keeper, uh, the Keeper Vault is you can actually put your, your TOTP codes inside the, T the Keeper Vault um, so we, you know, it's an easy way for you to share out two-factor authentication with people and the two-factor is already there. It's already in the record. And then the great thing is the browser extensions, the Keeper browser extension will fill those TOTP codes automatically. Um, so, so from a, a standpoint of a person who says, oh, I, I'm not comfortable installing an app on my, on my phone to do this, they don't have to because Keeper supports that, that TOTP standard. You can literally put it in the record, share that credential out to that employee. And then when they go to the website, they click to log in, the browser extension is going to fill their user and password. And then it's going to drop in the, uh, the TOTP code and it'll be the easiest thing they've done in a long time. Again, much easier than a spreadsheet or, or a post-it note. So, 
So yeah, that is a great question. So so the fact that you're you're using the keeper security with its you know military grade encryption, you know the 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 triple layers of of encryption at at, at all times. Um, you have the the uh, great industry security, but also the the incredible ease of use, and that's always what we're going for is is striking a balance between that really powerful security and ease of use. So I love that question, you know, and and so it does it does present, and we are we are getting feedback from customers saying uh, they're getting a lot more user adoption. They're having a lot more customers that are that are using uh, the the two factor authentication as a result of how easy we've made it. So great question. I just want to say one more thing on this and, you know, hate to, to you know, toot my own horn as uh, somebody in marketing, but every organization of a certain size, you have social media logins and those social media logins are, you know, sort of privileged accounts because if an attacker does get in, they could damage your reputation, steal customer data, um, leak information about your organization. And there's so many people in marketing and PR and comms that have to touch those. So at Keeper, we do sort of think about privilege access a little bit differently. Um, it is privilege access for the masses. And the example that I always give is the, the login and credentials to the Keeper Facebook accounts. And we have Facebook accounts for our various locations. And we're a cybersecurity company, so we're targeted every single day. You know, as Travis mentioned, just like small businesses, but we we definitely have a, a bullseye on our back. Um, when new marketing employees join, they're added to a role. They get access to a shared folder with the social media logins. The social media logins have a privacy screen so that the end user can't see the password. They also have the TOTP code embedded in there so that even if that privacy screen was compromised by uh, a threat actor, the TOTP code would still prevent them from accessing the record. And it's just super easy to use. You don't have to worry about somebody else using the credential and then they have to slack you or text you and ask for the, the authentication. Um, so it is a really cool feature and I think it's a use case that a lot of organizations can adopt across not just IT, but everybody. Fantastic. Yeah, that's that's great elaboration. I like that. And absolutely, we we do have you know a lot of clients that want to lock down um, their their social media uh, accounts, especially with uh, a lot of um, new new developments on the social media front for businesses. Uh, so so that's a common ask and and something that definitely is a hot topic uh, among our our product team. But we we already do have some some great strategies for your social media accounts. Um, so yeah, how, how does Keeper Security work uh, as a platform? And, and you can see here, basically we have, um, you know, as far as, as uh, multi-device support or, or cross-platform support, we have, you know, the mobile version, the desktop version, the web version of the platform. And, and on the mobile side, we have um, both the iOS and Android. And, uh, and then on the desktop side, we, we do support uh, Windows and Mac and Linux. So, you know, you, you really had, it's really dealer's choice as to what you want to install uh, Keeper on and, and the browsers as well. We have support for all the, the major browsers in the industry. So you generate and store strong passwords. So you can see here, basically in this animation, you click the dice, the dice is generating a strong secure password. And it's really that quick and easy. And, and again, that's what we're going for is ease of use. That's the same thing that will happen within the browser extension. Uh, again, when you're changing a, a password on a website, um, the browser extension will come up and generate a password for you to, to change that. So here we're going to a site. We're going to fill a record. It automatically fills that record and jumps us right in. So you can see that they click and away they go. OK, so autofill. Uh, extremely popular uh, piece of functionality. And the great thing is you, I've literally seen people open tabs and they just click, click, click. They open three different websites and then they autofill, autofill, autofill. And, and it's really literally that fast as far as uh, uh, productivity. And again, that's one of the things when your employees are resistant to using this, you can go back to and say, okay, let's have a little challenge. You can use your post-it note and you can use your spreadsheet 
and I'm going to use Keeper Autofill, and we'll see who can log into the website faster. Not, not in a condescending way, obviously, but but hey, boom, click, click, click. I'm into three different websites. How fast? You know, you're probably still on your first website trying to log in with your Post-it note. So it's easier, it's more secure, and and that's usually where you get your adoption. We can do that, you know, in training sessions as well. And, and we always come from a place of empathy and, and speak to people, um, you know, with a lot of heart and dignity. Um, okay, so secure sharing, sharing credentials between coworkers. Uh, this is fantastic because you're not exposing things uh, on, on the public side. Again, anything that you, we call it the keeper vault because anything that, that is sacred to your organization should be really held here. And you can see that there's uh, files and such that can be attached to these records in addition to usernames and passwords. So what you're seeing on the screen here is essentially uh, if I were to come in, so first thing they're doing, clicking a shared folder, and then they're editing that shared folder, then they're going down and giving permissions. So can edit and share permissions to someone. And then you can see the groups as well that are set in here and then can manage users and records. So it gave a few different permissions and, and talking through a little bit of what that means um, at the folder level. So we, we do have uh, SSO integrations, we have integrations with Azure and Okta and Google Workspace. Uh, and in a lot of instances, we can connect your single sign-on provider with skim provisioning so that you can you can connect your groups. So let's say your Azure groups to your shared folders. And then right here, what you're seeing is that team. That team represents an Azure group that came over from Azure skim provisioning. So Keeper is powerful enough that it can it can work with Azure. It can coordinate with Azure in the background, and Azure can manage the memberships of those shared folders for you. So again, the the idea behind the platform is to to reduce your administrative overhead, to to give you this this enterprise grade uh, powerful solution uh, at a, an extremely reasonable cost, uh, and then you know, to allow your, your employees to, to securely share things out in an easy way. We have a, a top-down sharing model. We have a bottom-up sharing model. And what that means is you can, you can load things into your vault and share it from the top down, maintaining control from the top. Or if I'm not very technical and I need to share something, but I need someone's help to share it for me, I could add someone to share that thing on my behalf. So so Keeper supports uh, all those sharing models. And there's many ways to, to configure that piece of it. And we always consult with you. We always help you to set up your sharing um, the way that you want. Again, when you're getting Keeper, you're not just getting uh, a password manager. You're getting uh, a team of security experts to advise you along the way, every step of everything that we do. And sharing is definitely a part of that. So the IT admin console. So you, you can essentially monitor and control the strength of, of your passwords, as it says here, and enforce uh, best practices for password hygiene. Uh, so, so the two components we've been talking about, the, the vault itself would be a way to reduce your attack surface, right? I'm, I'm storing my passwords securely, my documents securely. I've reduced my attack surface. Now, what about the, the administrative control and visibility? Uh, so within the admin console, uh, you can curate the user experience, uh, but also you can see what's happening with events and passwords. So walking us through this animation, basically uh, I'm popping up, you know, I can see what's happening with an individual user. I can take actions to help that user. Maybe I wanted to disable two-factor authentication for that user, or I want to uh, transfer that user's vault to another user. So let's say you have a, an accountant with a keeper vault and uh, and that, that person leaves the organization and you wanna be able to transfer that accountant's vault to the new accountant. Maybe when you replace them a month later, you certainly could do that. But here you also have visibility on all the events that are happening. That's a chart of events. And then, uh, and then also what your users uh, are doing within their vaults, which would be the compliance reports, which would show you who owns what records and who has what shared with whom. Uh, here is a, a security audit report, and you only saw that briefly, but the security audit report is going to show you how strong each user's passwords are, 
you know, who, some, or how many strong passwords do they have? How many weak passwords do they have? How many reused passwords do they have? Who has two-factor authentication turned on? Um, so you can see how compliant your organization is uh, on a score basis. And, and then also things like, uh, like our breach watch, which is a way to scan the dark web to see if any of your credentials are, are exposed on the dark web. Um, so these are a lot of the advantages of the admin console. And you know the feedback that we're getting from clients as we onboard them and and as they get in and, and take a test drive of the system is that that this is the most powerful admin console that they've seen. Um, that they're very happy with the options that they have. The fact that they can curate the user's experience, they can turn functionality on or off depending on their security posture, and you can you can also increase enhance your security posture anytime you want as fast as you can snap your fingers. Um, but, but yeah, the platform, as far as being able to run this as a small business, um, again, the Keeper security team is going to help you to get it configured, to get it set the way you want it to run. That only takes maybe one or two phone calls and then, and then away you go. You don't really have to worry about it. It just, just operates like magic in the background for you. And you do take advantage of, of all that security expertise, uh, in addition to protecting all of your vital assets. All right, so, so we have a promotion here. Uh, attend a demo, get a, a free three-year personal password manager subscription, and um, you know that's. I think that's pretty exciting they, as, as a value, as a dollar value, and uh, and obviously to your you know to your personal life, the fact that you're you're protecting your personal passwords, you know, which is far more secure than than the browser, um, you know, the browser extensions or anything of that nature. Uh, again, you can upload documents to to the password vault, um, and we're a big believer in protecting you know your personal data in addition to your business data. So, uh, so yeah, we're happy to do a demo with you. We'll we'll keep it um, you know fresh and and entertaining. We'll make sure that nobody's falling asleep. But um, but yeah, we we'll look forward to seeing. Uh, go ahead. Questions from the Q&A chats. Uh, the first one, which has actually been sent to me a couple of times, um, and I think we should address, is related to one of our competitors, LastPass. Um, LastPass okay. was briefed last year, and the question has been phrased a couple different ways, but essentially it's, could this happen to Keeper? What happened to LastPass? Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you for that. So the LastPass uh, data breach, um, that, that that's really unfortunate and you know, certainly we it, it's always sad we never want to disparage a a, a competitor so um and any data breach of, of any organization is terrible but the what happened to LastPass, it, it cannot happen to keeper because we have an extremely strong security posture and i can give you some points on that so here you know, essentially, basically, what happens with with LastPass is they had um, trust in uh, third parties, and you know that that data was compromised. And they've had a few, you know, data breaches. So, you know, it depends on which one you're talking about. Um, you know, and and then storing storing their secrets, you know, essentially improperly was part of the issue. So these are things that that. Keeper does in contrast to that specific LastPass data breach. So Keeper encrypts all vault data, including the URLs. Um, uh, Keeper doesn't store secrets such as cloud uh, infrastructure access, access keys in its source code. So that that's a big one. We have the, the true zero trust, zero knowledge architecture. And you know the long and short of it is really that there's nothing to steal on our side. When we, when we set up your security, uh, essentially all the encryption keys, because we're zero knowledge, zero trust architecture, all the encryption keys are on your devices. So only your devices can encrypt and decrypt your data. Um, so, and we have extremely powerful security. We're hosting with Amazon Web Services and, and we have many, many security measures on the back end that I can't speak to uh, in this session, but but it is very extraordinarily difficult to get into our backend. Uh, 
even if they were able to get past all the, the those miles of barbed wire that we have protecting our back end, um, there's no there's no encryption keys for them to steal. All the uh, the security controls for the encryption are on your end on your devices, and we also protect your devices um, by ensuring that only a, a device that's validated can access a vault. Only a device that's verified can get into a keeper vault. And then we don't, you know, trust you know third parties like Twilio. Uh, everything that that we're doing, obviously, we are working with with Amazon Web Services, but um, we we know for a fact that we have full control of everything that's happening with with our AWS infrastructure, and we work really closely with those folks on that end. So, those are some of the reasons why uh, why the last patch breach isn't going to happen with Keeper Security. And uh, and another reason, you know, would be that we we are the most audited and and certified platform in the industry in terms of certification. So we are FedRAMP authorized with the impact level of moderate. We do have a FIPS 140-2 validation for our encryption model, and we're SOC 2 and ISO 27001 uh, certified. And then we we do regular penetration testing. We're PCI level one, and on and on and on. So. So just knowing for your comfort that that our our platform is constantly being audited annually and penetration tested, and we have ways to mitigate against the the more um, potent attacks in the industry. So that's awesome. a great question. Yeah, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, we do have one question, but if we could keep it relatively quick, I know we're a little bit over, and we do want to wrap off the Yeti. Uh, so this question is. I think a good one for the topic. Um, when an employee leaves the organization, what happens with their vault, the records, everything that was shared with them within Keeper? Okay, yeah, so that that's a great question as well. It, so we have uh, offboarding measures for you. One of the options would be that you can transfer that employee's vault, and and that's really your choice as to whether you can as to whether you want to set that up or enable that. Um, some sometimes you might just delete a vault. So if you're if you're using our compliance reports, you can actually see the contents of a vault, which would be you could see the the URL and you can see uh, the title of the records. You can see who the record is shared with and and who owns the record and so on. You can't see the username and password in that report, but you could gain v enough visibility into a vault to make a decision after an employee leaves as to whether you want to delete that vault altogether or whether you wanted to transfer that vault uh, to another person. So typically the way that, that that's going to work is um, you, you would lock the vault initially and that preserves the content. Uh, so any shares that you have out to everyone, all that sharing is going to work as per normal. Nobody's going to get disrupted. And then when you're ready to transfer that vault to another employee, uh, and that could be a month later, it could be two, three months later, then, then you just go in and, and there's a transfer option under the admin console. You select the employee. All the contents of that vault would flow over to the new employee in a separate folder and it would maintain the same uh, structure, the same hierarchical structure. It would just be in a separate folder so that they could identify that that came from the, the previous user. So those are a few of the, the offboarding methods that we have. The, the transfer method is, is very popular, but again, you decide as an admin which groups you want to have vault transfer capabilities, because obviously from a legal standpoint, you know, certain vaults you may not want to transfer, and we we do give you that full control. So excellent question. Awesome answer. Well, thank you everybody. We do have a winner for the Yeti giveaway, and it is Bridget Gibson of Prep Networks. So. Bridget, if you are still on, um, congratulations. If not, I will shoot you an email directly and. We'll make sure to get your um, preferred shipping address securely and we'll get this sent out to you this week. So thank you everybody for attending. We're going to be sending out the recording after this event, expect it in a couple hours or so. Um, and please feel free to take us up on the offer of a free personal password manager for three years if you just attend a Keeper demo. And uh, you can reach out to us at the website keepersecurity.com. Try for free, sign up for a 14 day demo, and, and we'll know that you came from this webinar. And, will uh, set you up with a free personal plan. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Thanks, thank Travis. You. No problem. Bye.